Again, well, welcome Saints. It's good to have you all with us. Um, it's great to be together and we're uh, looking forward to this word from Brother Minoru. So we'll just go ahead and turn it over now to Brother Minoru. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sam. Um, good evening to all of you. Um, this would be our first, um, you call it episode, our first talk fellowship uh, of 2024. Um, and because we're still uh, towards the beginning of this new year, uh, this is January, uh, well, I have good. a lot of... I have, a, I have a lot of feeling within me uh, concerning that. About three years ago, I think I gave a specific word uh, concerning what we should do in a new year uh, for renewal, for a kind of a recall uh, of our, the past year, for a kind of a Reevaluation re of just where we are, and even for a rededication or reconsecration of ourselves uh, to the Lord. Um, I think you can find that on living to Him. I ask the brothers to bring it to the forefront of the uh, of these um, 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 recordings. Uh, but um, last year, uh, excuse me, last week, uh, I made another recording because uh, of the burden uh, right now in the beginning of yet another new year. And so I gave a talk to um, some of the serving saints uh, of Bibles for America at the uh, distribution center. Um, it's about uh, Sam and our law, something like this. And um, it is along the line of a new beginning, but in a particular way. And that is how uh, the race that we're running, this Christian race, um, is not just one super ultra long marathon that you one run all at once. Uh, even with these uh, uh, French bicycle tour, it's a 30-day, 1,000-mile uh, uh, um, competition where the one, uh, the course is broken down into small segments, uh, sometimes uh, climbing hills, sometimes are on, on a flat uh, surface, uh, you need a different strategies. You need to do different things. But for sure, you have to uh, finish every segment in order for you to qualify for the next. Am I right? Uh, if you are disqualified or if something happened, then you're out. So uh, it is the uh, these incremental stages that becomes important and practical as we are uh, endeavoring to run this entire race, this, this race course. So our whole life, uh, 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 Christian life, is such a course. And actually, I can say even corporately speaking, a church, a local church, church in Irvine, is also running as a collective uh, competitor, as a collective athlete, runner in this race. So um, there are, therefore, there ought to be many new beginnings, many different courses, and even many endings or attainments or the finish of a particular course. And then you go on to the next course and so on. This is how this race is run. So we can easily apply this to ourselves, brothers and sisters. Don't think we are here just to run and until we see the Lord. Yes, in a general sense, that's what we're doing. But my question to you is, which stretch of this course are you on? You see, 
suddenly that becomes practical. What course, what short course are you on? Uh, where are you in this race? Um, uh, in a sense, forget about the future courses. Where are you? Are you in the beginning of yet another course? Are you in the middle of that course? Are you towards the end of that course, uh, readying yourself for the next round, for the next stage of this race? We should be cognizant. We should be aware of that. And that's how we run. Now, uh, of course, this is not strictly tied to the calendar year, you know, so every beginning of every calendar year, uh, we run, start a new course, and at the end of the year, we finish a course. Um, not necessarily, because it's organic, and all our uh, circumstances and situations, as ordained by the Lord, uh, are different. But I like to take the uh, opportunity of yet another new year to remind us of this. It is normal. It is necessary. Uh, if we mean business, if we are a lover and seeker and pursuer of Christ, um, to take the advantage of a new year or a new month, for that matter, or a new week, or a new day. Really, if you read the Old Testament, there are feasts that are annual, you know, yearly feasts. There are monthly feasts. There are weekly feasts. And so uh, it's almost like every year you need a new start. You, 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 you're at the start of a feast every month you are having a new beginning. Every week, you should have a renewal. Every day, you should have a revival. Do you see this? The more new beginnings, the better. The more um, uh, renewals, renewal and revivals, the better. We should not just be running and after a while, this run becomes routine. It becomes just kind of a, you're just shuffling along, and and uh, the race is so uh, so distant and so so long that you just don't know where you are. No, no. Uh, and and so I spend the time uh, with the uh, dear saints last week, uh, using the Song of Songs as an example. That song, uh, that book, uh, that poetry book. Um, uh, if you go and look at the outlines in the recovery version, it's divided into exactly six stages. And the whole book um, um, uh, is a picture of the pursuit of a lover of Christ, uh, of his beloved, uh, from beginning to end, from the time that you know, she was first drawn to the Lord and uh, begin to love the Lord and experience the Lord for his or her satisfaction all the way through the different stages. The, the, the stage initially of just being satisfied and the next stage of beginning to know the cross, you see? And then the next stage of uh, experiencing ascension and then the next stage of a further experience a deeper experience of the cross um, as the new creation, and so on, and finally reaching in the last stage her maturity, at which time he uh, exclaimed, uh, make haste, my beloved, to come. That means she is ready to meet the Lord in rapture. But you don't just get there, run this long race, you run them in segments, one after another successively. My question to you tonight, dear brothers and sisters, is where are you? Which segment of your designated race are you? You can know it. Uh, just like this, uh, the book, the Song of Songs, um, you know, and each stage 
she attained to something. She was not where she began. She attained, she arrived at something, something good in her experience of Christ, in her growth in life, to use our terms, term. Um, but she may be satisfied with her attainment, but the Lord wasn't. So the Lord has to come and make another call. So in the beginning of many of these stages, it was the Lord saying, come, my beloved, come. Don't be contented with where you are. Don't be satisfied with where you are. Yes, you have attained to something. You have enjoyed me, but that's not enough. I have a lot more in store. I have a lot more prepared. I want you to reach the ultimate goal. So even Paul, in his race, is are in stages, all right? Um, in Corinthians, uh, that was sort of, you can say, the beginning of his run. And towards the end, um, before his martyrdom, he would say that I'm about to uh, finish uh, the course of my ministry. And in between, you have Philippians, where he said, I have not yet arrived. He is still, I don't know, in the next to the final stage or the final stage, I don't know. But he considered, I have not yet fully gained Christ as I should, according to this above calling to me uh, to um, gain that reward. He, he, so he said, I am still, do not count myself to have attained. I forget the past. I reach forward to what is before. I run. I pursue. So Paul clearly know, knew where he was. He knew he was not there yet. He may be close to his aim, to his goal, but he was not there yet. Until in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 7 and 8 there, in his, he said, I have finished the course. See, he knew. I have finished the course. You see, Paul, even Paul ran in stages. So, brothers and sisters, I'd like you to consider what stage are you in, right? I cannot tell you. You need to go to the Lord. So I would like to strongly encourage you, brothers and sisters, if you have not done so, before the end of this month of January, while we're still in the beginning of the year, take some time, take a day, take a day off. You say, that's a lot. That's not a lot. What, what's important on this earth, brothers and sisters? This race is the most important. Our pursuit of Christ is the most important thing. So take the time, take half a day, take, take some hours, um, and be with the Lord. Take turns with your wife to take care of the children. And I mean that because you, and I need that time. You, don't, you cannot just do something here and try to multitask God. God is not for you to multitask while you're doing your business. Then you have some, some God here, you're doing business. God wants your complete attention. God wants to be with you. It's like um, uh, Jehovah came with the two angels to visit Abraham, spending the whole day there, doing nothing but conversing, fellowshipping at the Oak of Memory. And there finally, finally, after a long time, Jehovah revealed what was in his heart to Abram. How can I withhold it from him? It took Jehovah some time to get to that point to open his heart to this friend of his, Abraham, the friend of God. You think we can just kind of uh, do all kinds of things and, you know, God is in one of our split screens on our computer. It does not work. I really adjure, I really encourage, I really exhort all of us brothers and sisters to give the Lord a few hours of your time. Give the Lord a day and be with him. Be with him. Just wait on him. Be in his presence. 
open yourself up entirely to him and let him take his time to speak to you, to touch you, to expose you, to shine on you, to tell you what is on his heart. And also it takes this kind of time for you to calm down, to stop everything, to just be with the Lord, and there you open up to him. So this is what we call a time of dealing. I use another word. This is a time of transaction with the Lord. And it is here that you will begin to know just where you are. The busy day in and out, you don't even know where you are. You keep running, thank the Lord, but you don't know where you are. But it is in these moments with God that the Lord will speak to you and touch you about many things. He would say, man, this last year, you backslid, you sideslid. You were distracted by some idols. You were, you, were, you were distracted by the world in this or that. Your consecration is not so absolute. Do you see what I'm... Uh, I'm just illustrating the Lord. You have to be with the Lord for the Lord to say these things to you that no one knows. Only the one who searches our heart and our inward parts would know. So you be with him and let him speak. Let him touch. And as he touched, we deal with him. We transact with him. We confess our sins. We make repentance as necessary to him. We are saved. We're redeemed. We, we, our salvation is forever. No problem. No problem. But the problem is what? Is our fellowship with the Lord can get broken. While we are going on as a believer, we can be beset by certain sins. We can be uh, tempted by the world. Um, uh, we can fall into some kind of transgression. Uh, we can be defiled by this and that. All kinds of things would happen. And because of that, while we are eternally saved, we need what? We need to bring, be brought to the awareness, the knowledge of our situation. And based on that, we would be with the Lord to confess to repent, and to receive the fresh cleansing of his blood, uh, to, to, to enjoy him as our propitiatory cover, to um, uh, return our heart to him, to turn back to him if we have left him some, or if our services have uh, waned, we need to come back. This or that, what? the Lord would have a way to touch you deeply and in great detail if we would spend the time with him in this way. So I just urge all of us to do this now. Don't wait. Don't, don't wait until February. Don't, don't, don't set an appointment for March. Now is the time. Now is the time. And do that individually by yourself. Now, there's a place for us to do this together as the church, but do this first individually. Take time with the Lord. I like to tonight to offer to you uh, hymn 403. Hymn 403. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. The song called Lift Thyself, Lord Jesus, you know that one. Um, uh, and, and verse 2, I like, consecrated is thy temple, purged from every stain and sin. May thy flame of glory now be manifested from within. Let the earth in solemn wonder see my body willingly, offered as thy slave obedient, energized alone by thee. Every moment, every member, this is verse 3, girded, waiting thy command. You know, some of these times are, are times before the Lord. Lord, 
evaluate me on what I did last year? What's my scorecard? Do you understand? Quote, unquote. How did I do? So don't think this is not spiritual. This is too much. Don't think that way. We need to be that specific, that practical, that real with the Lord, and then he would be likewise to us. Underneath the yoke of labor or be laid aside as planned. The Lord may say, this year, this is my commission. Or he said, this year, I want you to learn this lesson. Or he may say, you still haven't gotten through in this. I want you to get through more this year. I want your pursuit to increase. Here it says, when restricted in pursuing, no disquiet will be set underneath thy faithful dealing, dealing, not a murmur or regret. You see, dear brothers and sisters, these kind of times with the Lord, if we miss it, if we are lacking in them, we won't be a revived Christian. We There's no way for us to live a God man life of of uh, an overcoming God man life. It's impossible. We just kind of just generally in the church life, kind of kind of uh, um, shuffling along in our Christian life. There's not not a a a a, a definite uh, endeavor and pursuit and awareness of where I am. Like every runner, every competitor, every athlete would have. I mean, right? When they're running, they always, how far am I in front of the last guy, you know? Do you follow me? Because it's a race. It's a race. Oh, this is the last lap. I've got a kick, you know? This last kick, I'm going to push it off. Uh, okay, I think this is good enough. You, you know what I'm saying. Now, tonight, I just want to uh, refer you to... Um, a uh, uh, a uh, a uh, the collected works of Witness Lee uh, that would be in the year of 1961 to 62, uh, volume four, and there is in page 507 to 510. I I give you all the reference, and this is what I'm reading, and this is what is in my heart, and this is what I'm gonna talk to you based on how I'm inspired. But I want to uh, uh, you to go and read it and even take this uh, a chapter, if you will, probably not a long one, and just lay it before the Lord and and just, just deal with him even based on this chapter. Now, the important thing is um, uh, with this is that this chapter, this is a talk during the 10 days conference of the all-inclusive Christ in 1962, right? During that, that conference, Brother Lee gave a word towards the end. Why? Because the end, the last day of that conference is December 31st, 1962. So he gave them a word uh, at the end of the year and uh, looking to and. A, a new year ahead. So he spoke concerning a new beginning. What is a new beginning? And particularly uh, these words in the Old Testament, the first day of the first month of the year. This is repeated in the Old Testament, the first day, the first month of the year. And he mentioned particularly four things or four cases where such a phrase was there. Something occur at the first day of the first month of a certain year. And, and uh, the four, and, and again, I won't belabor because I'm just sort of uh, um, giving you a little bit of a, um, uh, a foretaste. You have to get into it yourself. The first is in uh, Genesis chapter 8, when after the flood, you know, after the fall of man, at the time of Noah, the whole earth was flooded. And then uh, 
Then at a certain year, the 600 uh, first year, um, in the first month, and in the first day of that month, the water was dried up from the earth. And, and, and Noah removed the covering from the ark, and he saw the surface of the ground was dry. What happened? This is exactly what happened. Not exactly. This is like what happened in Genesis 1. On the third day, the dry land appeared. You know, that dry land is simply Christ. Christ is the, yes, the uh, Israel land, uh, the Canaan land. I tell you, actually, Christ is the land, the dry land, whereas waters uh, and, and the sea is a picture of death. Dry land appearing simply refer to the resurrected Christ coming out of death in resurrection to bring forth newness of life and light. Because all living things, uh, vegetables, cattle, even the human life, comes out of the land. The land is the life source. And that land is Christ. And that Christ came out in resurrection, out of death. And that is a picture of a new beginning. So the resurrection of Christ, that first day of the week, signal, signify a new beginning in this universe, in God's economy. And here, in the case of Noah, surely that signified a new age. The old, old earth was flooded, was destroyed. Now a new age begins with this family of eight souls. And there, God established a new covenant with him. And there, a new beginning started, started with God's, with the man that, he had created. So that is the first picture, the first picture of a new beginning. You know, I remember in the, uh, uh, I gave the last message in the semi-annual on the all-inclusive Christ. I pray a long prayer. You remember that? <clears throat> and at the end, I pray again, a prayer of consecration. I felt the whole training on the all-inclusive Christ was a call from God to his whole recovery. To what? To go up to the land at once and possess it and gain Christ in a new way. I don't know whether you forgot about all of that. You know, the semi-annual is over. You know, now you're back to the humdrum daily life, your job, your kids, your your family, but brothers, what what about this new year? What about this new stage? What are you going to do this year? How are you going to run this year? What's the co course that the Lord has laid out for you to finish this year, not your whole life, but just this year or this phase or this stage? The second one, when this word occurred, is in Exodus 40, the end of Exodus, where what? Where in the first month of the second year, the second year is the second year after they left Egypt. On the first day of that month again, the tabernacle was raised up. When the tabernacle is built, the tabernacle simply is an issue. This is my other message, right? Of our enjoyment of Christ. The Israelites eventually enter into the good land, and out of the enjoyment of, of that good land, the temple was built, God's dwelling place. And the city was built, the kingdom of, of God. And so here, so here, this tabernacle being built up, uh, being, being raised up at the end of Exodus, uh, signify what? Signify that there is a new beginning of God's expression on the earth. This is a new beginning. You know, the time when uh, I enter into the church life and uh, enter into the building with the saints uh, in the body of Christ in the church, that was a new beginning to me. Uh, it's, it's a demarcation line. It is this one is this side is pre church life. This one is in the church life. You see? 
And it's a new race in front of us, I realize. A new, new, new life in front of me called the church life. So, so even for the church life, brothers and sisters, you and I need a new beginning. How about 2024? You experience a new church life, a new dimension of the church life, a new depth of this church life, not the same as last year. You know, you just kind of, no, no, no. Lord, I want to go higher. I want to go further. I want to go deeper. I want to enter into your building much more. I want to become your part of your testimony more than last year. And my services in this tabernacle, my all this Lord, this new year, it has to be stronger, richer. Lord, I ask this of you. See, this is dealing with the Lord. Dealing with the Lord. Lord, I consecrate, you know, Romans 12. I co We consecrate our body a living sacrifice to prove his perfect will. Lord, I'm reconsecrating my body to you to prove your perfect will in 2024. You see this? Lord, my service. What about my service? Lord, about my function. What about my meeting life? What about my shepherding? Talk about shepherding. Lord, I want a new beginning. You, 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 you go to the Lord this way, the Lord will speak to you. The Lord has a lot to tell you, to speak to you in a very, very personal way. The third one is in Ezra. After 70 years, uh, God sovereignly, you know, uh, Caused the king to make the decree for the Jews in captivity to return to Jerusalem. And so in Ezra chapter 7, it says the new start, the new start was in the first day of the first month of a year. That's when they start the journey, leaving Babylon to go to return to the land from captivity. And of course, all this have to do with returning to Christ, building uh, the house, and then establishing the city, uh, and so on. This, this departure, exodus from captivity, coming back to Jerusalem, is a new beginning. You know, many uh, uh, believers... Uh, seeking believers who touched the church and they decided to uh, 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 take this way of the Lord's recovery, that is a new beginning, a new beginning. And for us, it's the same. Then finally, finally, uh, this is really wh where I want to spend more time, but time is up already. It's already half an hour. But let me just briefly mention this last one, is concerning the cleansing and sanctifying of the temple. The case that Brother Lee cited is the case, case of King Hezekiah, one of the good kings, all right? And in Second Chronicles there, in chapter 29, in the first year, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of Jehovah. It's been locked up. You know, it's, it's, it's boarded up. Uh, it's gone. It's lost. Uh, all the priestly services, all the worship of God, even the whole house is, is uh, locked up, broken, torn, in disrepair. And so he opened the house of Jehovah and began a repair work. And you pair this with Ezekiel chapter 45. It says what? On the first month, in the first day of the month, you will what? You will purify the sanctuary. So this is a case where the sanctuary is in existence. This is not a freshly built tabernacle. This is a sanctuary in existence. But that sanctuary has become dirty, defiled. Um, um, 
uh, boarded up, locked. And so now there needs to be a work to do some real house cleaning, to cleanse the Lord's temple so that there can be a new start. And this temple, maybe I will take another time really to speak to us about the temple, this temple. We need to go to read four places in 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians where the temple of the Holy Spirit is mentioned. It refers variously to the temple of our body, our body, physical body being the temple of the spirit. We need to cleanse that temple. And then it talks about us, just our, our being, our whole being generally is a temple that needs to be cleansed and sanctified. The third temple is the temple of a local church. Paul spoke to the church in Corinth as a temple. You are the temple. And finally, in the last place, he talked about the temple being the whole universal church, the body of Christ. And for all these four levels, four levels, there needs to be a new beginning. Now, how do you cleanse this temple is what I said to you early on tonight, and that is through our spending time with the Lord in much prayer in our spirit to have a thorough clearance before the Lord, clearance before the Lord, so that we can be inwardly cleansed and sanctified to him once again. This is a new beginning. This is a new start. Whenever we have a new start spiritually, this is inevitably what will occur prayer uh, prostrating before the Lord uh, opening our entire being conditioned to him letting him touch sweep wipe search disinfect whatever he needs to do and we would just cooperate with him so that all oh, many, many things that is not God would be cleansed, would be cleared up. How about something you were not able to forgive someone the last year? The Lord needs to get through with that. How about you have something bitter within you? The Lord needs to get through with this. Otherwise, you cannot go on. I don't know what it is. Now, how much we do this, uh, uh, it that the Spirit will guide us. I have too much experience of this. Every time I'm in this condition before the Lord, the Spirit leads and guides how I should transact with the Lord. And it is through this kind of cleansing that our being, uh, our church, um, can have a new start. We are that sanctuary. And in the first day, in the first month, we need to open, open for this cleansing, for this sanctification. There's something that is not holy that needs to be sanctified. Something that may be sinful, that is offensive to God, that needs to be touched and removed. I don't know. I don't know what the Lord wants to gain gain us or something that we have not been faithful to the Lord that the Lord has called us to do. We need to repent to him. So I just stop here tonight, brothers and sisters. The Lord give us the strength and the burden to have such a definite time with the Lord while we're still at the beginning of another year, so that we will have a new start and we can run this next segment of the designated race the Lord would have us run. May we all do this. The Lord be merciful to us. Amen. I stop here. Amen.
Amen. Well, may we all take the time, you know, as we have this time before the month ends to take this word back to the Lord and particularly to open to him, you know, related to all that was shared concerning having a new beginning, uh, even opening to him concerning where we are and what the Lord wants to bring us into in this year and our experience of him and also in our experience in the church life. So uh, saints, we'll go ahead and end here. Um, we just wanted to remind everyone we'll have our next, uh, or announce to all the saints, we'll have our next fellowship uh, in two weeks. That'll be February 1st, Thursday, February 1st. So we look forward to seeing you all there. Um, amen, saints. Let's go ahead and we'll end here. Amen. Good night. Amen. Amen.